How you guys doing? Chris Ignato here. You're watching Nature Now. So it is now late August and it's a good day out. It's low 70s. I'm gonna hit a meadow or two, the stream, and a little bit of woodlands here. So uh, let's see what we've got. Come along. There's not gonna be anything under these until this area is kind of cleared or something. Oh, huh. I'm wrong. Look at this. Okay, I just found the cutest spotted salamander, and it's August. This thing is really small and it's adorable. Check it out. Here's a little baby spotted salamander. It's the cutest thing ever. That's the smallest spotted I have ever seen, except for the little, uh, you know, predaceous aquatic stage, the water lion. It is adorable. I want to take this guy home, but I can't because that would be unethical. That's a strong web and a big spider. And a big web. And once again, I found a patent leather beetle, also known as the best beetle. These are incredible beetles and I'm always excited to find one. One of the facts being something that is very rare among insects in general, both the mothers and fathers will help to raise their young. And it's really cool. These beetles live in colonies. They will actually use audio signals to communicate to one another. And they'll feed on decaying wood and other plant matter and they actually poop it out. And there's a special fungus that grows on that and they use it to hand feed to their offspring. Really cool stuff. Wow, that's a big mushroom. It's about a foot tall. These are orange mycenas. Another beautiful type of woodland mushroom. But these ones are on the old side, so they're starting to dry up and shrivel. Really beautiful looking though when they're in their prime. Now a cool thing about toads is they actually absorb light over a period of four seconds at night to get a really good picture of what it is they're looking at and it helps them to see really well in low light. They sacrifice detail doing that, but it's still a really great way to see what they're looking at. So if they're looking at a slug or a snail, after four seconds they see it really well across that dark landscape. Now this is Indian pipe. It looks a lot like a fungus, but it's actually a plant. It's got a bit of a waxy coating and it has no chloroplasts, as you can tell. These, these plants are similar to fungi in certain ways, but really, it's still a plant. When you peer at it from above, when this nodding head tilts upwards towards the sky, you see a lot of pink in it. Sometimes this whole plant is a pinkish tinge and they're quite beautiful. They only live for a few hours to a day or two. Always a wonderful find. This is what I was hoping to find today. One of the things. These beautiful fluorescent orange mushrooms. A true work of art. I say that so often. But that's because there's a lot of art in nature.
Sorry, little snake. Well, this species is always an exciting find for me. This is a ringneck snake, and I really love these snakes. I've got a video about them, so I'm not going to talk much about it right now, but very cute, beautiful snake species. But these are very cute and beautiful snake species. Very tame, they never bite, and uh, they're very reclusive. Go ahead and click on that link above if you want to see a short video talking a little bit about the ringneck snake. Little water snake. Where do you sip it in? Up oh, here we go, another toad. Been finding plenty of them and pickerel frags today. That's always fun. Leave me alone. Okay, okay. Now this flower here, or this plant, is called jewelweed. And it's actually pretty cool because, well one, look at those flowers. They remind me of snapdragons in a way. They come in orange and yellow and a cross between the two. I saw one that was white and I'm not sure why. And uh, well they're just an amazing flower, an amazing plant. There are several species, their flowers are pretty much all the same in appearance. and. You can crush the stems to gain a juice out of them. If you look at the stems, they're somewhat translucent. I'll show that in a future video, I'm sure. But it helps alleviate symptoms of poison ivy if you apply it immediately after contact with poison ivy. But my favorite thing about this plant is touching those seed pods when they're ripe. Some days, just the wind will set them all exploding and shooting their seeds for many feet in all directions. What a lot of fun. This plant has another name, Touch Me Not. And you can see why. Huh, I've seen this moth a couple times in the past, but I'm not sure what species it is. Pretty cool looking though. Ambush bugs. These things are so crazy, I have a video all about them right here.
Okay, so I'm sure you can tell that it's pretty breezy right now and filming in these goldenrod meadows in the breeze is very difficult. I'm looking for things like goldenrod spiders, locust borers, all sorts of beetles and butterflies, wasps, spiders. All that stuff loves to be in these type of meadows, you know, with the daisies and goldenrods and flea banes and everything else. But the breeze makes it extremely difficult to film close-up insects, so, you know, maybe another day. So this here is the caterpillar of the brown hooded owlet moth. And I have to say, <laughs> for lack of better words, it's a rather dapper caterpillar. I'm actually pretty jealous of its appearance. I wish I was so finely dressed. Look at those stripes, those, those beautiful pinstripes, that beautiful red accent along the bottom margin of the body, and then those beautiful yellow markings that I actually find to be reminiscent of molars. That's how I always know this caterpillar when I see it, those, those beautiful tooth-looking markings on the side. Just a very, very cool caterpillar, yeah. and they tend to feed on asters and goldenrod. Those are the only places I ever find them. Exploring meadows, especially goldenrod, transition areas and woodlands in a nice late August afternoon never fails to show lots of wildlife and insect activity. I just love it. I really hope you like this video. If you want to show your support, go ahead and hit that like button and perhaps even share the video. Believe me, a little help goes a long way. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And if you want to see more, here's a link to another one of my videos that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. So until next time, thanks a lot for watching. I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.